Welcome to the official Cryptids Anomalies and the Paranormal Society's podcast. I'm your host, Barnaby, and you're listening to Whispers from the Dark. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Whispers from the Dark. I am your host, Barnaby. Today we are still airing our interviews from the Janesville Paranormal and Metaphysical Conference. And uh, we have a very special guest on today's show. Uh, He's been on numerous TV shows, a 22-year career. And uh, most recently, Help My House is Haunted. And um, he's got a new show coming up, but we'll let him talk about that as much as he can. Uh, Today's guest is Chris Fleming. But before we get to that... And now it's time for Ma's Book Corner. Yay! (laughs) There's the applause. All right. So what book are we going to be talking about today? (laughs) Shapeshifters, Morphing Monsters and Changing Cryptids by Nick Redfern. Ooh, all right. (laughs) Yeah, that's creepy. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> that was your comment? That was my comment. Okay. <laughs> All right. This book is about so many encounters and stories from the UK and North and South America, um, from werewolves to Loch Ness, witches, um, to souls of people who came back from violent deaths to become part human and part animal. Um, so many different forms and descriptions and theories uh, very good stories in there too, you know, of recounting people, recounting their encounters and stuff, um, and they really make you think. But Nick Redfern is known for giving the information and then uh, making you think, you know, and and he gives you a lot to think about. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he he tells us. <laughs> He tells these stories in his own words, and that makes them more interesting than just uh, here's the account of the what happened. Um, he describes the shape shifting beliefs of many countries, and he delves deep into the large black dogs and witches and aliens and balls of light, men in black, lizard people, and so much more. It's just. It's a really cool book, and uh, it was a very enjoyable read. Nick Redfern's Shapeshifters, Morphing Monsters and Changing Cryptids. Very cool. Where'd you get That's that book? Cool. Yeah, you you bought it. I have this book? <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, I should read it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a really cool book. So if you... Like uh Nick Redfern. Uh, we're going to try and do more of these. Uh, start um, Well, we have a lot of these. Uh, we're going to start including them in our episodes now that we got a bumper for them and everything. So um, <laughs> we worked very hard on that yeah, bumper. I, I needed a bumper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so if you want to uh, pick up a book, because um, you know, it's very important for our research that we get new material and books and stuff that Ma can delve into and read. And, um, and definitely we will uh, continue to review them for you on here and tell you what we've been reading and listening to and stuff. So uh, if you want to pick up any books for Ma to read, uh, you can buy them for us on our Amazon wish list. Uh, there's a lot of books on there and you can pick them up and they'll get sent right to us. Um, the information on how to do that is right in the show yeah, notes of this new episode. One to that list too. Yeah, definitely. When you sent me the other day. Cool. All right. And without further ado, <laughs> on with our show and our first guest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest here on Whispers from the Dark is... Chris Fleming, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. You are uh, not far from here, I hear. You hear? Yeah. <laughs> like someone yell and tell you? <laughs> he did. He's got a big oh, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Resnick. I got to let my you know partners know what's going on. That's you know? right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, I live about an hour away. That's really cool. I, 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 it's really I, cool. <laughs> I get up in the morning, and I have to go all the way to O'Hare, park my car, take a shuttle to the airport, you know, an hour and a half, two hours before the flight, get on the flight, and then maybe it could be delayed. 
then get to where you're going, and then wait for someone, get your bag, wait for someone to pick you up, take you to the hotel, then you got to check in, and then you got to go, and then you're like, oh, I'm so tired. Get in my car, hour drive, boom, I'm here. Wait, I blinked, <laughs> and I'm here. So nice, especially your own car. You know, if you want to bring extra stuff, it's right there. It's just, it's great. It definitely is. Like, we're yeah. we're only two hours from here, and we've gone all the way down to uh, CryptidCon in Lexington. And, oh, wow. And Sault Ste. Marie for that yeah. one and stuff, and we, we've been at all those. So and, somebody and, sued Marie? Yeah. No. Yeah, you didn't hear about that? <laughs> Sault Ste. Marie. But she's a nun. She didn't yeah. do anything wrong. Yeah. Apparently. Sorry, this, when I'm, like, really tired, I get loopy. You That's know, okay. last night. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the couch in the hallway, you know, cracking jokes and stuff. I get really uh, funny. Actually, very Good. funny. Good. Well, yeah, that's what you. we need. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Not only funny looking, but funny overall. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. Watch it, buddy. <laughs> no, just He's talking it. about himself. Don't worry. I know. No, he's funny. He's funny too. Well, did you tell? Didn't you tell a joke last night? I think you did. A couple of them. Okay. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I was more than just a fly on the wall. <laughs> that's right. Fly on the wall. There's a song by ACDC. Okay. Good song. Fly on the wall. Yeah. I was flying, crashed on the fly on a wall. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I'm 5'10, I weigh 215 pounds, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> nice, so am I. So am I. Yeah. I didn't know this was a dating site. Yeah. Okay, well, you told me, tell me about myself. <laughs> it's like being on a dating show. Well, you know. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about what you're doing lately. I'm collecting bugs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like I said, man. You know, two days of uh, doing spirit art and everything. I think I cranked out like 11 spirit art or something. I, I, I can't remember. But, um, yeah. What am I doing lately? Yeah. <laughs> what, what have you been up to? <sighs> Good question. Compressing everything into one answer would be difficult. But, um, actually, I was, I got called by Discovery back in, I think it was October. I get this email. Hey, we need to fly you out to... Uh, overseas to film this one show when <laughs> next week <laughs> what and i'm like you know you're not gonna say no but a party's like wait a minute i got all this other stuff that i'm doing for clients you know because i got clients that i have every single week i got other projects i started working on and i'm like okay well i talked to my agent i said you know they got to get a visa to get me out there make a long story short yeah i got out there i wasn't able to get out there for the first episode because of visa and getting the rights and stuff so uh, they flew me out there about three weeks later, I think it was. I was out there. And um, it was interesting. It was a challenge because the uh, production company had never done paranormal before. So they're trying to follow a narrative and this and that. And I'm like, no, guys, this is, you know, and then when something paranormal is going on, they're filming an interview. I said, stop the interview. Start filming this paranormal. So that happens with every, I've been, been doing paranormal TV 22 years. Okay. So I worked with a lot of companies. And the one thing that's common, you know, Zach will tell you this, Jason Hawes will tell you this, is that a production company's never done paranormal. They don't understand it's very different than doing a documentary and filming interviews and locations and general views, is that when something paranormal happens, you have to be ready to film. It's called on the fly. You've got to be ready to document and record it. So it's first couple of times we have stuff happening, and they're like, okay, okay, let's film it. I said, no, it's over with. It happened. It's gone. Well, can you just tell us what tell you? It's not the same thing. You know, it's when you're in the middle of something, you know, a noise, a scream, or a door opening and closing, and it's like you go towards it. So it took a little while to get used to that, but the thing was they were very receptive, very open, and they were so great to work with. And they were they were, they were fantastic. And I was just like, wow, this is this is great. So it was a good a good formula. Uh, we went all over Scotland, and uh, you know, you're going to hear about this in the next two weeks. It's going to start hitting social media and stuff. The network is. But I'll tell everybody that, because um, I wasn't going back to doing Help My House is Haunted because of COVID and there's several other reasons why, I gave the crew everything, all my blessing at Help, uh, support Ian doing the show. I mean, I would love to go back and do it. I told you guys, you want me back in the future, have me back. But at this time, I worked on this other project and it was, it was incredible to go to places that I never thought I would go. We're talking about going to places where fairies are, you know, incredible castles, historical locations that nobody's been to before and investigated. And, you know, you know, being a paranormal investigator, it's always great to go somewhere nobody else has been because what discoveries are going to find. But the way that they shot this is just beautiful. So I think it's going to be something fresh for people that's out there. Plus, they're going to see 
me communicating in ways that they haven't seen before because people have been afraid to put this on TV as well as they've edited it out or whatever. But you can hear me direct communication back and forth with some of the spirits, but you hear it in the ITC, back and forth, back and forth, talking. You know, sometimes some people, they get, oh, wow, it said this or it said that, wow, oh my God. No, 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 I'm talking to the spirits already and we're using ITC to validate it as I'm communicating with them. So I'm telling you, oh, they're telling me this and then the ITC says it, or the ITC says it and I'm telling you why, you know? So it's really, really cool. But that's the big thing that, uh, you know, I can share with you. Uh, the other stuff is I'm finally going to start writing my book this year uh, called Caught Between Heaven and Hell and uh, share stuff all the way back to my childhood, you know? Um, art's a big thing with mine, you know, with the spirit talk, and I plan on doing some original pieces. I want to get back into the museums and galleries later this year, you know, which is my passion. So we'll see. You know, other stuff can't talk about yet because it's no use talking about it until we've actually got it being done. You know, it's just an idea. You know, someone's saying, you know, I got all these ideas. And it's like, in this world, you can have the greatest ideas in the, w in the world, but if, unless you really do something, put it into motion and create it, take those steps, it really doesn't mean anything. It's a great idea until it's actually happening. So that's it. So tell me about you guys. <laughs> well, this is about you. This is about you. I have questions. Yeah, shoot. And you can, uh, shoot. you know, I, I understand, you know, you can't talk about some things, you know, with the You can tell me stuff, whatever you want to ask. I've always been that type of person. I've always been very open with everybody. Cool. You know, so, so please. Um, you, I, I'm a big fan of, I, I'm, I do more cryptozoology than, than paranormal and stuff. Sure. So I'm a big fan of uh, Bigfoot and Beyond with yep. Cliff and Bobo yep. and Finding Bigfoot and stuff. And, yep. and Cliff and Bobo are always big advocates on the fact that when they started filming uh, Finding Bigfoot, the production crew was always like, you know, you know, oh, we thought we saw something. Can you pretend that it's a Bigfoot or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I hate that and, and they stopped that. Right. The Finding Bigfoot went in and said, we're, we're not going to do this show if you're going to play that game. Right. So I'm interested in you kind of like mo mountain monsters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of interested. You touched on a little bit and stuff, but from your experience, you said 20, 20 some years, 22 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 1999. I did uh, consulting for real scary stories for ABC. And then in 2000 came out world scariest ghost caught on tape uh, by Robert Kiviet. Uh, I think that was the one he, or one similar contacted me for consultant and submitting some stuff for the show and then plus they sent me some stuff what do you think about this and ah, it's not legit this and that and then he used it so then the actual first TV appearance even though I shot an interview with real scary stories they didn't use it which is fine because it was really about these kids going to these scary places it was uh, dead famous I mean I got um, an email from Charlotte her, her name at the time was Charlotte Wheeler and she was a uh, producer from 2-4 Productions Say, hey, we got this concept for a show called Dead Famous. Would you like to do it? No. I wasn't interested in doing TV because at the time, I was in the mortgage business. All right? I was doing really well. I'm talking about 2000, 2001, 2002. I mean, I was killing it. And for me, the paranormal, I did a magazine for four years, four or five years called Unknown Magazine. And it just really wore me out because I didn't make any money doing it. But it was so stressful and exhausting putting together a 72, 68-page magazine, you know? And I'm like, what am I doing this for? I'm doing it for free, practically. You know, I'm, I'm losing money. Like, I owed my stepdad 10 grand in money he lent me to publish it, which I eventually paid him back in the mortgage business because I'm making money doing that. But here's the thing. People need to know, sometimes if you don't make money doing something and it's your passion, it's going to pay off somehow, some way, even though you can't foresee it. Here's why. Charlotte sent me an email saying, hey, would you like to be a part of this TV show? We're looking for an American paranormal investigator, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I never responded to the email. Three, three months later, I get a phone call at the mortgage company saying this is someone from the UK. I said, oh, shoot. I think it's that woman, right? She gets on the phone. Is this Chris Fleming? Yeah. Are you still doing your magazine? No. She's like, well, are you still in the paranormal? I start laughing. I'll always be in the paranormal. I see ghosts, and I have experiences all the time. She says, okay, great. We got this show. And I'm like, uh, she goes, can I get, send it to you just to look at? And so I look at it, and I tell the other guys in the office. I go, hey, guys, look at this. They're like, oh, my God, are you going to do it? I said, I don't know. So I called my mom. So mom, what do you think? You know? I mean, do I really want to open up this door talking about what we went through as a, you know, as a kid and what happened in our house and me going back to communicating with spirits? Because we knew all the negative stuff that happened. She says, well, it's up to you. And then she says, well, why don't you just pretend? Why don't you just act? I go, Mom, I can't do that. If I'm going to do that, it's disrespectful to the spirits. She says, well, what are they asking? They said, well, they want to fly me out to the UK. They said for like three days. And we're going to shoot like a mini pilot. She goes, are they paying for everything? Are they paying you to be there? Well, they're not paying me to be there, but they're paying for me to fly. She goes, Chris, it's a free trip. Go. 
So all right, fine, I'll go for a free trip, right? I'm going to, I'm going to the UK. I haven't been there since I was in high school because my mom was a flight attendant. So they fly me out there and, uh, you know, I met Gail and we shot this thing and, you know, I came in contact. Oh my God, I'm coming in contact with the spirit that's where he died. It was, was uh, Bol- uh, who was it? Uh, oh my God, I forgot the name of his, his name. It wasn't Mike Bolton. Some rock singer that died in a car accident, okay? And I was communicating with him, like, oh, wow, he's coming through. This is cool. Didn't think anything of it, right? Fly home about uh, maybe six weeks later, I get a phone call. Well, guess what? It's green lit. I said, well, congratulations. He said, no, we start filming next month. I said, all right, congratulations. No, you're in it. What am I supposed to do? Well, just what you did. I go, wait a minute. You mean I'm on this TV show? I'm like, I didn't want to do it. So now the producer's mad at me because, well, we got a green lit with you attached. I said, well, I, I didn't think it would get green lit. I mean, I'm, I'm busy here in the mortgage business. So I sat down with my boss and everything. We worked stuff out. People would cover for me. So I went out and did it, you know, and the rest is history. You know, it was dead famous. And we did, uh, and I'm glad I did it. But here's the thing I got to tell people is, remember, this was very personal to me. It wasn't something that I wanted to put out there. And the very first episode we shot, which was in 2003, it would have been August 2003, we did Marilyn Monroe. Very first episode. We're sitting there, the uh, producer says, okay, I want you to bring everybody into the room and do a seance, lead a seance. I go, I haven't done a seance since I was in high school, and before that, since I was in grade school. And I'm sitting there, what if spirits don't come through? Well, they have to come through. Well, if they don't come through, I'm, I'm going to look terrible on camera, unless I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. She goes, Chris, why we hired you? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like completely stressed out, okay? Remember, I grew up, I grew up playing sports, so it's like when you're on the field and if you drop a ball, whatever, it's embarrassing. So this is the way I'm considering this. So... There was another psychic that was there. I won't say his name because I don't like to really throw people under the bus. But he was, I, I could tell he was a little jealous of what I'm doing and this and that. And that he's not on a TV show, he's a guest. But I realized, you know what? I can throw it over to him. Right? I'll pass the buck to him. So I lead everybody in. And the, and the producer's like, okay, fine. If that's what you want to do. I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. So we, we get, get to the table. And I'm like, okay, I'm, uh, I start getting it in my head and this woman in my head I, said, I see this woman's coming through and everything is this Marilyn I said I don't know if this is Marilyn I said Mike do you see this woman he says yes I do Mike tell us about it <laughs> so, so he goes off and communicating with this woman I'm like oh, I'm free I'm free I don't have to do this so I'm sitting there and he's just going off he starts doing automatic writing with it oh this is great man all the pressure's on him you know he's communicating I don't have to worry I don't have to do this because I don't want to be embarrassed so I'm sitting there and now we're all holding hands Okay. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there and I feel someone else's hand go on our hands. I'll hold the woman next to me, and I don't hold the woman next to me. Okay, she's someone that's associated with Marilyn Monroe. And all of a sudden, we both look at each other and we felt someone's hand come down—a male hand. We look at. Do you feel like? Goes, yeah. What does it feel like? She was a man's hand. I go, I know. Holy cow! So we're feeling this. So I'm sitting there, and then I haven't said anything in a while. And Michael's talking, and Barry Taff, parapsychologist Barry Taff, is there, and he's talking to Michael and this and that, and they're discussing it. And so all of a sudden, Barry smells something, and he's talking about it. And I feel, I feel this. So I'm thinking the producer, someone's like, Chris, you need to say something. So I open my eyes, turn around, there's nobody there. What the hell? So I turn all the way behind me to see if they're behind me. I see this little girl, ghost, little girl. Behind her are all these other spirits. I'm looking at her and I see them. I'm like, she's like, Chris, why are you afraid? We're here. You've never lost us. We've always been here. You just have chosen to not talk to us. I started bawling because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to communicate. But here they all were lining up behind me. And I turn around. Now the producer sees me crying but doesn't see them, of course. Walks over. Are you okay? What's going on? Are you communicating with Marilyn? I said, no. No, they're here. She said, who's here? All these other speakers. She said, well, start talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I'm just like. So I start having the spirits come through and I realize everything's going to be okay. You know, so for me, it was like that one moment, like, wait a minute, I can't do this. It's not really about me. It's about just allowing them to come through. So the difficulty was, though, is there's times when I was channeling and I'm all over the place and it's it's painful and it's it. I wasn't able to really calm myself. And so I tried just completely open up. Some spirits would come in and try to control the body through possession, whatever. And it looks ridiculous. Okay, but it was I was still learning on how to allow them to come through. Like for now, sure, I can channel, but also I can not channel and say, okay, you're here. Your consciousness can meld with mine, but I'm going to communicate. I'll let you use a little bit of my voice, but I'm still here. I, don't, I will not let them completely take over. Okay? I've done that. It's not good because they follow you home where you still have attachments. So it was also a learning process for me, doing Dead Famous. 
I mean, I could always see or hear or feel ghosts, but I was never really allowing to express it. I would tell people in the room, okay, the spirit's here, he's telling us this, he's doing that. But in these situations, it's different because some of these spirits were more powerful, you know, and they want to completely dominate, take over. I said, oh my God, if you're going to take over my body and allow me to feel or see what you saw, then go ahead. But you have to be careful in doing that. So that was what changed everything for me. And then my boss was like, you know, you're gone all the time. How much you make? And I said, well, I'm only making a grand an episode, which isn't much at all. He's like, Chris, you can make a quarter of a million dollars doing mortgages. And you're wasting your time doing this? I said, but you don't understand. I said, this is part of my childhood. This is, I'm passionate about this. So the thing is, is how did Dead Famous, how did the producers find me? You want to guess how they found me? How do you think? The magazine? Yes. The magazine ended up in the UK. Someone had a copy of it and they saw it, saw my name, so they looked me up. So if I wouldn't have done that magazine, I never might have been found. But here's the interesting thing, is the girl I was dating at the time when I was doing my fifth issue, which was the Bigfoot issue, okay, um, was the first time that the uh, magazine actually was making money. It was, had 74, 75% newsstand sales, which the publisher, Big Top, which was the company that was actually distributing. They said, this is success, you got success. Well, I, I, I know, but I, I don't want to do the magazine anymore. I'm busy doing mortgages, making way more money. But the interesting thing is I told my girl at the time, she's like, you know what, you're not spending enough time with me, you're doing the magazine, something's got to give. I said, well, you know what, I'm making more money mortgages, I'll do that, I'm just going to have to let the magazine go. But I know the magazine's going to come back in some other form, like I'm going to be on TV or something, doing something like the magazine. And that's exactly what happened. So that's, that's what got me to doing what I'm doing today. But for me, I have the proper intent and passion with what I do. Whenever I do a show, I'll sit down and I'll talk to everybody that's on the crew and I'll talk to also my teammates and say, okay, why are you guys doing this? Okay? Here's why I'm doing this. All right? I've died. I've gone to the other side. I came back. And that was in 2010. I said, I'm here to help spirits and souls. I'm legitimately here to help people if they need help. But I'm also going to try to help these spirits and communicate with them. If they need to cross over or if something's trapping them here, whatever it is, that's what I do and this is why I do it. But then also... We have to contribute something to the paranormal field while we're doing the show. Every show I've done, I've contributed something. Okay, and I can prove it. I got a whole timeline. Because what's the point of going on TV and doing something if you're not offering something, giving something, contributing something, not only to the people you're helping, but also to the field? That's what's important. So you're going to have some people that don't know what their intent and purpose. Some people just want to go on TV to be on TV, which is not the right way. And I tell people, if you just want to go on be on TV, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're going to get torn apart because you're going to be an amateur. You have to go on there and have knowledge, experience, but also contribute something. What are you contributing to the program, to the viewers, and to the field? That is number one. And that's what I do with every show that I do. I've turned down some shows. I said, I, I can't contribute anything doing the show. You know, oh, do you want to go to this place that's real scary and stuff like this, and you're just going to you know, get freaked out? I said, no, 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 no. That's like Dead Famous. We used to get freaked out by stuff that happened. I don't, I don't do that. Okay, you find someone else that's amateur, they'll do that for you. So for me, it's all about contribution. So that was a long answer. <laughs> I, I was wondering where it was going. I liked the story. I was wondering where it was going. And then it came right back and they explained it. Right yeah. That was a very awesome answer. Welcome back. That Chris. was awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so to expand on that, where I was going with it originally, though, too, and, and that completely covered a lot of my other questions as well, but... Um, have you noticed that the filming industry of the of the shows in your 20 some years yeah. have you noticed that the producers have changed like has it has it gotten more like uh, acceptable to have these shows and more acceptable like you said on on the one that you just filmed where you're doing new things that you know you haven't done before and and shown things in that has it become more mainstream and acceptable to do the, the kind of stuff yeah oh well, yeah paranormal was big and it, and it always been big and you have these cycles now you know, I used to watch these cycles when we're talking about in the, in the mid-70s. They had the Bigfoot documentaries that played at the theaters. You had In Search Of. Then uh, Sightings came out and other shows. And they had Art Bell in the 90s. I had a video library that was huge. Of all paranormal documentaries on videotape. Why well, videotaped everything? I have no idea. You know, they never got really used too much except watched them a few times. But the thing was, is I kept my eye on the cycles. Those paranormal cycles. And you remember we had that cycle with sci-fi. Okay, and sci-fi had all these paranormal shows. And then if you remember, it died down, sci-fi. Why? Because they created these kitsch. I call them kitsch. In art, we call it kitsch. Where, like, you take the Statue of Liberty, Liberty and you turn it into a statue and make it artistic. You know, it's kitsch. Really weird type of things. They were taking paranormal and making kitsch shows. 
you know, shows that were just kind of way out there and ridiculous or whatever. But what that does is it's kind of a slap in the face to the paranormal because you're not having experts and this and that. You're pushing the limits, and it's really not part of the investigative process. That kills it because then people say, oh, this, this, sh- this show's crap or this show's boring or this show's not real. It's faked. And that ruins the interest of paranormal because it's filling up all this filler instead of just concentrating on the really good shows and keeping them going, like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and other shows. So that kills the cycle, and it did for sci-fi. So then they dropped Paranormal, and then it went to uh, Destination America, you know, TLC did a little bit, and then obviously Travel, and now Travel's moved on to pretty much for Discovery and Discovery Plus. And it's going to sit there until they do another cycle, and the cycle could get ruined if they, you know, have other really bad Paranormal shows. The one thing I think they're doing good is they're, they're cutting back on ghost hunting shows because there's a lot. I had a meeting with them in February. They're looking at just shock docs right now and other shows similar to the Ghost Town Terror or whatever they have right now yeah. is we're looking at a certain location that is iconic or scary and you put some investigators in there. Sometimes they're looking for fresh new investigators so people out there that have been wanting to put a document or something together, now's your chance. They're not looking for ghost hunting shows. They said it. We've got way too many and you're going to see some don't get renewed and not coming back. Okay, because they're heavy on that, and to to maintain that cycle and to keep it going, they've got to cut back. They know that, all right. So they're going to go with their top shows. So where's it going to go from there? Well, I think UFOs and stuff are going to continue to come back. I think they they've stated for the last three years they don't want to do cryptid shows, okay? But yet they got this Bigfoot show, makes no sense. So they decided to test it. I think you're going to see cryptids come back, UFOs come back, aliens come back as well as life after death and stuff like that in different contexts because that's the cycle that is going to fill that need for paranormal and not get you burnt out on ghost hunting shows. So, yeah. Um, But the thing that's good, too, is that when you see independent filmmakers make their own documentaries, you know, like Brian Murray and Rachel Stratton, I I watched the uh, Sleepless Unrest. That was really good. Have you guys seen that? No, I haven't. It's good. You got to watch it all the way to the end. Now, there's there's a couple times where I'm I'm screaming because I want to see more of that evidence. They just showed some evidence, or they 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 put it on the screen but don't say anything about it. And I'm like, play it back. Let's analyze that. Let's go into that detail. And that's that kind of upset me a little bit. But it, it was really intriguing. I enjoyed it. I was glued to the set. And at the end, I was like, no freaking way. So it's good. Watch it. Seriously, it's one of the good ones out there. I mean, Demon House was great. I had gone to Demon House with Zach, and I watched it. I went to the opening night theater with, like, 14, 15 people. Loved it. And then The Lost Tapes. I think that's one of the best documentaries out there, The Demon House, because it's real. I've been there three times. I had an experience attached to me after I left, 2014. So I know how real it is. Um, Well done. Sleepless Unrest is well done. You know, there's a couple other documentaries. I'm forgetting the names. I apologize. That are good. So I think people should start focusing on documentaries and then selling those documentaries to the streamers, okay? But the big thing, going back to producers, producers right now, uh, we started this with Help My House is Haunted. The second season, a, direct, a director came in creating a narrative. He looked at the history of the play saying there's witches or there's a serial killer or whatever else. We're going to focus on that narrative. So the interviews and everything. But the problem was, as we get to the house, we start ghost hunting, and like, there's elementals here. There's not negative spirits. These are elementals. These are pixies. Well, what am I going to do with the narrative? I go, well, it's not my problem. You document and film what we're doing, you know? In another place, there was supposed to be a killer there, or they believed there was a killer. It wasn't a killer. It was a demon. It was a demonic entity that actually had possessed this guy many years ago and caused him to kill. He didn't kill in that house. He killed down the street. They wanted to stick to that narrative. I wouldn't. I'm following these demons and going after these demons. So you're having... A producers and directors create a narrative and then build the show around the narrative the only problem with that is if you get different evidence it doesn't really fit that narrative if you have a flexible director that realizes hey this is good stuff that you got even though it doesn't fit the narrative it tells another story we need to introduce this story into the episode or the documentary that's what's important when i was doing dead famous um the network quickly green lit two specials because i loved when we did the uh Frank Sinatra, Thunderbird Lodge location, and when we did Al Capone, Alcatraz, they said, we want to send you back out there because those locations are amazing. So they did Return to Alcatraz, Return to Thunderbird Lodge. And I remember the director, Chris Williams, was like, what am I going to do? How are we going to do this? What is is the story for this? I said, Chris, base the story on the history of the place, the characters and the prisoners that have been there. You tell that documentary story. Let us investigate. The ghosts will tell the story. 
who we come in contact with and what happens will be the story. We had some crazy stuff happen, right? And some other stuff, I'm like, I cringe. I'm like, ah, you know? But the fact of the matter was, is it, it told its own story. And that's what Paranormal Investigating does, is it tells its own story. Because when you have a really good medium, you have really good investigators that get EVP or evidence, that evidence tells a story of who's there. That becomes the narrative. And then, later on, but they like to have everything packaged and ready before you get there. Like, here's the characters, here's this. Can you come in contact with them? Sure, we'll try to come in contact, but if we're not there and somebody else, that becomes a story. So now they're like, well, we already did the interviews. We'll do the interviews afterwards. That's what's great is like Ghost Adventures will interview some people in the beginning, and if they get certain evidence, they'll go back and interview people based on the evidence they get. That's what's great about what they do. They have that flexibility because they have a really small production crew to be able to afford to do that. But bigger production companies, we're only going to be there three days. We can't go back because then we got to move on to the other thing, and, and schedules are built on delivering the product. So that's the big problem that you see. So if you've got flexibility to follow up, follow up is so important on these paranormal shows. How many shows you watch, they play the EVP and they don't explain it and then that's it? Or they don't yeah. follow up with it. It's like, well, come on, I want a solution at the end. And that's what we did in Help My House is Haunted and why it's successful today. Okay? And uh, so there you go. There's the formula for a successful paranormal show 101. Awesome. I appreciate that. We'll work Thank on that. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you touched on something there, and I, I was wondering if you could talk a little more on it. You know, you, you talk about, like, channeling and, and seeing these different yeah. things in that, yeah. and you said that you saw fairies or elementals. Yes. Do you Can you talk a little bit more about that? And as stuff, crazy like, as this is, um, if someone, you know, let's put it this way, in the 90s and 2000s when people told me they saw fairies and everything, I was like, okay, sure. You know, I mean, I've seen, I saw demons as, as a kid, which are, I realize now, part of the elemental realm, the, the small imps lowest of the hierarchy and I had an experience when I was a child where I got lost I was five years old I followed these kids into a forest and past the forest where a new subdivision was and uh, I didn't know where I was I was terrified I started hearing these voices come from the flowers and the grass and they said we're right here I said I can't see you are you scaring me he says no we're right here right in front of you and I'm like all right you're freaking me out because I don't see anything right and all of a sudden this slit appears and my guides appear and I go through this light and I'm on the other side. If you want to know more about it, listen to my podcast from January 2019, Spirit Talk. I go to detail into it. That was my first encounter with these things. On my 40th birthday, my mom gave me a finger painting that I had done in preschool. And it's outside our house where the trees are and I got my cat by there and a squirrel going up and I draw all these like smiley faces and sad faces and neutral faces, circles with faces on them flying around the trees. I said, my mom, these are nature spirits. They're in the trees, they're in the forest, they're in the grass. She's like, well, are they in our house? No, they don't come in our house. They're just outside. I can't see them, but I can hear them, and they talk to me. These were elementals, but I didn't know as a kid. My mom gives this to me. I'm like, oh, my God. When we were doing the Devon House of Help My House is Haunted 2017, we come in contact with a pixie because I got the EVPs. I said, what are you? What would you call yourself? It says, pixies. It's clear as day, EVP. You know, watch the episode. And then I said, well, what would we call them, like, remember the wudgies? Well, we would call them puck wudgies or whatever, right? So I, now I'm realizing, oh, my God, we're dealing with a freaking elemental. Oh, my God. So me, Barry, and Jane, we said, okay, well, then let's try to get proof. And we got proof in the SLS. We got three figures, really short, on the SLS. We're talking about the digital dowsing SLS, not the hack SLSs that have a lot of false positives. We're talking about the digital dowsing. But then we continue to get EVPs. And then I said, I want to see what you look like. And I see this black mass smoking. I see a figure. I, oh, I can't see you enough. And all of a sudden, boom, it's on the leather chair. And this figure appears that's about three foot tall of this creature going like this. And I'm like, oh, my God. I go to the camera. Do you see? He's like, no, but I heard it land on the couch. He heard it land on the couch, but he doesn't see it. But I go, I can see it, but he can't see it. And I'm looking at this thing. So I did a drawing of it, of what the pixie looks like, which is like half troll, half insect. All right. Fairy, troll, insect, thing. So there's my first face-to-face -face encounter with an elemental. After that, I started having more experiences. I come home, I saw something. I go back to the UK, we see something. I said, oh my God, I'm starting to have experiences with fairies. When we filmed uh, The Curse of Lizzie Borden for Discovery, the documentary, we went out to a forest to try to come in contact with the puck wedgies or whatever else. And I said, are there any other elementals here? And it said, yes, yeah, sprites. And all of a sudden, I see this thing flying around that looked exactly like Tinkerbell. I'm not kidding you. I'm sitting there going, I see this thing flying around and all this like dust, like sparkles following it. I'm like, that is not a lightning bug. It was like, and then again, it was like, what, February and it's freezing out, okay? It's like 10 degrees out. And, we're, and I'm looking at this going, the only thing I can compare it to is when I grew up watching Walt Disney and Tinkerbell would fly around the castle. This is exactly what it looked like. And they said, oh, that's a will-o'-wisp. 
I go, what the hell's a will o wisp? I look and I'm like, a will o wisp is a sprite. I got on my recorder when I asked the elementals, who's here? It says, sprites. Will o wisps. Tinkerbell is a sprite. Did you know that? If you look up Tinkerbell, she's a sprite. The real <laughs> is what I'm telling you. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, now I've seen a pixie, I've seen a sprite. Okay? So May of last year, I'm in my bathroom, I got the door open, my cat's sitting next to me. I'm on the phone with Dave Shray. He calls me. He's like, so what are you doing? I said, you really want to know what I'm doing with Dave? Okay? He's like, oh, boy. Anyway, can I talk to you? So we start talking. As we're talking, I see something in the corner of my eye. Right come around the door frame. I turn and look. And I'm like, scream. I go, ah! And it goes, and it starts behind the doorway. Dave's like, what's wrong? I said, Dave, you're not going to believe what I just saw. You're not going to believe what I just saw. He's like, what'd you see? I said, I saw a gnome. He starts laughing. I go, Dave, I swear to God, I saw a freaking gnome. It's a little man standing there. It's like, it's got a white beard. It's got a blue suit. It's got a, like a red hat type thing. And it had a little pudgy face. It's like a one foot man. And he's like, oh my God. I'm like, what the hell? Now I got gnomes in my house while I'm, while I'm on the toilet. <laughs> it's like, so at this point, I'm like, all right, this is crazy. Once you've had an experience in the Fey realm and you continue to pursue such realm, you start having more experiences. And plus, depending upon what type of person you are and your intent, they start making themselves known. So uh, that was uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, whatever, or during the afternoon. Wednesdays, I was going to my mom at the time to go get grocery shopping before and spend the night at her house. And she's got a wheelchair. So I tell her a story. She's like, do you think I have gnomes? I go, Mom, I don't know. She lives in the forest. I said, I don't even think they exist. And if they did exist, I didn't think it would be in America. I think it would be overseas. So she goes all the way down the hallway in her chair. And then I'm on my laptop just doing work. And all of a sudden, I hear in the back of the house, Chris, knock it off. Who the hell is she talking to? Chris, knock it off. It's not funny. She comes back. I go, Mom, I'm in the other room. What are you talking about? So she comes and she goes, she sees me, you know, laying down on the floor with my laptop. She realizes, okay, there's no way it was him. She goes, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I go, what happened? She goes, well, I'm going down the hallway. I went into my bedroom. I'm coming out of the hallway. And I hear this, hut, 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 And I'm like, are you kidding me? She's like, no, that wasn't you. I said, no, it wasn't. I said, oh, mom, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It sounds like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs were like, you know, hi-ho, hi-ho. I go, that's probably a freaking gnome. It sounds like a gnome from what you're saying. I said, oh my God, you got gnomes in your house now. She goes, Oh, that's cool. Why'd they do that? I said, they're probably just letting you know. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. People are going to think we're nuts. I said, I don't care because we're experiencing this. This is something completely new. This is amazing. So that is what's on my mindset now. And I just did a podcast uh, with Kate Ray talking about gnomes. I play some of the audio of the elementals communicating with me in the UK. Also a conversation with gnomes when I was at the Smithwick bathhouse in, uh, it was near Birmingham in the UK with Barry Guy. We had about 50 people there, and I had a group of 25. And when we were doing ITC communication, I said, uh, you know, who else, is, who else is here? And it says, gnomes. I go, gnomes? How many gnomes are here? It says three. So we start talking to them. We have the audio recording and the video of them talking back. And here's the cool thing is 25 people witnessed it. Also, our director of photography from Help My House is Hana was standing right in front of me. So we have the proof. You can listen to it, and it's not like, ah, oh, well, it sounds like... You're like, oh, my God. It is so clear. So I asked. I said, you know what? i got to ask you guys this. The little statues that people put on their yards and this and that, I go, does that bother you? Yeah, we don't like it. It upsets us. Okay, you hear that. But then I said, so really, does it really upset you or anything like that? It's racist. <laughs> and we look at each other. All of us like, did it just say it said it's racist? We're like, oh, my God. And we start laughing. Well, that makes sense, right? So as we're laughing about talking, I said, oh, Spears, you know, I just want to thank you for talking to us. Sure, you do this in front of people. And it's just like, oh, my God, now it's, now it's upset because we're making fun of them and we're doing this in front of people. It's kind of like we're kind of like disrespecting them. And I'm like, hey, I don't mean to disrespect you. You know, it's just it's not like everybody gets to talk to gnomes in front of 25 other people. You know what I mean? So, I mean, people go listen to my podcast, Spirit Talk on Gnomes, which just came out last month. I think it's episode 128 or 127. And you can hear for yourself. I mean, there's the audio recordings. When I was in Scotland talking to spirits, when I was at Smithwick Bathhouse, and then back in 2019, some of the investigations. And you can go back to the Elementals podcast from two years before and hear the Pixies EVPs. So that's the thing with paranormal is like you got to back up, if you can, your stories. And that's why I love ITC and EVPs. Because when you're recording documented, you can rec you go back and listen to it and see what you hear. In this instance, we got it. I was so glad that people recorded it. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.
That is amazing. What, real quick, what is ITC? Instrumental transcommunication. That is like EVP, digital recorders, spirit boxes, apps, okay. devices that allow you to communicate with consciousness, whether it's spirits or other elementals or entities, and you can hear the responses back. Okay. I've never heard it referred to that way. I've oh, ITC? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah. Okay. Using an instrument to transcommunicate into another realm, basically. Awesome. So, right. Cool. I, I really appreciate your time and You're your welcome. stories. And, and You're those, welcome. That was fabulous, man. Yeah, thank um, you. So, um, do you do you still do like uh, in, not investigations, but do you do you still do like um, people like go out and, and do investigate? I do people? So, do you do hey, man, I'm gonna do you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> do you do? They're gone. I make money. Do you, I'm a bounty hunter. Why <laughs> <laughs> right, you got someone? You need some dirty deeds. You need me to take care of somebody. I might. You need a I contract, might. Barney. Dirty, yeah. dirty, <laughs> dirty deeds. <laughs> dirty cheap. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> So, no, I, I, I've done spiritual consulting for over 16 years now. Okay, since 2006, that's maybe 18 years, whatever. Um, I do that. I have clients Mondays and Tuesdays every single week. Okay? I speak at colleges, universities in the fall. Um, and when I'm not doing TV shows, I'm doing, you know, private ghost hunts and events and stuff. But the, everything else keeps me busy. You know, it's my life. I left the mortgage business 2010 because I got in a car accident and then... At the time, I couldn't juggle everything I was doing. Plus, at that time, I was doing 25 events a year, speaking, and on the road all the time. And then I had a website that was just, you know, I was selling ghost hunting equipment. I was like one of the earliest people out there. I was so busy. So I couldn't do mortgages anymore. So I had to decide, well, I'm going to work out of my house or travel. I can't go to an office and do loans. It's too much. So I left. So I do what I do. I made more money, and I do miss all that money every year. And I've seen how my friend, friends have all these houses and other places, but the thing is I had to follow my passion. Like I told my boss, I got to do this. This is my passion. This is what I was built, designed to do, you know? So it's not all about the money. It's about your contributions and about what you love. So I struggle just like the rest of you guys. So that's it. But we do it because we love it. Very much so. Right. Very much so. All right. So where, where can people get a hold of you, get in touch with you, website? Well, the FBI, the CIA has good records on me. Um, <laughs> so a FOIA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you can, I, everybody's been telling me because, you know, the one thing I hate about GoDaddy and everything else, and I'm, I'm going to leave them, is, uh, is you got to get an SS, uh, SSL certificate all the time. So the certificate has not been updated because I'm moving my site somewhere else. So if you go to my links, ChristopherFleming.com or Ghost Outlet, it's going to say, this site may have been hacked or this and that. It hasn't been. If you go through it and click it all, you're going to go to my website. So they're just doing that because they want me to pay the SSLL fee, whatever it is. And I'm not going to pay it because I'm moving my site over in a month or two. So unfortunately, people are like, oh, you've been hacked. Man. No, I haven't been hacked. Just click on it. It's fine. Well, I don't want to click on it because it's going to take all my... Well, that's what they tell you to scare you, to force you to pay for it. You know? I, I will vouch for that. Mine is the same way. So, you know. but, but I have the SLS because it came free with my hosting. Yeah, well, so. That's why I'm going to this other company because GoDaddy nickels and dimes you to death, you know? Plus, their servers sometimes go down, so I'm not happy about it. So anyway, that's it. You know, they can get hold of me through that way on social media. Problem is, I, I'm not always able to respond because I get so many messages. You know, don't be one of those people like, hey, I wrote you so many times. You know what? You're an asshole. You're a fraud. You're a fake because you don't respond to me. Because I don't respond to you. Have some patience, man. I'm trying to do what I can to survive. You know, I can't reach everybody. You know, I've got customers lined up that I deal with every single week. So it's like, just be patient. You know, it's not like I'm ignoring you or just avoiding you. It's just, I can't do it all. I don't have an assistant that takes care of this. I do everything myself. So. Not I'm even a bear assistant? More human than human. What was that song? By, uh, is that Rob Zombie? Rob Zombie. Yep, great song. No, actually, that was White Zombie. Oh, was it? I, yeah. Ah. That was his early stuff. And then there's uh, Rag and Bone that sings the song Human. It's a good song. Anyway, sorry. I like music. You should check out I'm Only Human. I'm Only Human. You My are? Reds. Yeah, all right. All right, guys. I'm going to finish packing up my stuff and head out of here, head back home. Definitely. My safe, safe travels on your way. You have thanks such a long journey. Yeah, I, I, really, <laughs> I really appreciate you coming on and taking the well, time. Thanks for having me. You know, thanks, Resnick. You know, he, yeah. he was on me saying, hey, man, if you don't do this, I'm going to take care of you. 
Ooh. It was uh, three hours, uh, the roof, the river, the revolver, I told them. That's right, that's right. Yeah, worst case scenario, I was going to go find the local zoo over here in Janesville, that's right. dangle him over that lion cage. Well, see, but he doesn't know that. I'm just like Daniel. The lions will be like, hey, Chris, you're back. <laughs> I'm like, hey, take care of Resnick for me, okay? Here, here, here I brought you a chicken steak. Here you go. <laughs> got to remember, I'm a Leo. I'm a lion myself. Right. I got a tattoo on here. I got a tattoo on my arm of a lion. Okay, good. All right. We'll have the lion races then. Let's go. Lion King. <laughs> it must be a paranormal thing to sing the Lion King because it was at the the one convention that really? the, the Ghost Hunter guys were singing that too. So. Oh, that's hilarious! There I don't know go. the words as you can tell. But anyway, <laughs> circle. I did, I did a pretty good life. job. I did a pretty good job. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. Thank All right. you. You guys have a good trip nice home. Meeting you. Thank you. All right, you got it. That's Wisconsin C A P S dot com. There you can find links to all of our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and our Patreon. You will see links to our online store as well, where you can get t-shirts, DVDs, and more. If you click on the public events page, you can find out where you can meet us in person and all the public events we have coming up. If you enjoy our podcasts or our YouTube shows, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Wisconsin Caps. There you can find behind-the-scenes pictures and videos from all of our media, as well as bonus footage and evidence that we have collected. If you have encountered something you can't explain, we want to hear from you. Visit our website and click on Submit a Report on our main screen. You can choose to leave your contact information or simply remain anonymous. You can also reach us via email at wisconsincaps at gmail.com. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please contact us on our Whispers from the Dark podcast page on Facebook, or send us an email at wisconsincaps.com. Remember to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen or watch or find us.